My question for you today is, can jealousy and the evil eye affect our life? Hi, I'm Louisa David Davit, and thank you for watching. The answer is yes. The Talmud teaches us that a person can cause damage just by looking at another person's property. The Talmud teaches us that 99 out of 100 people die prematurely because of the evil eye. Basically saying that the graveyards are filled with people who are victims of envy. But it's a two-way street. The Talmud also teaches us that when you envy another person and want what belongs to them, you not only don't get it, but you lose what you have. And we can see that in this week's Torah reading of Korach. Moses' cousin, Korach, was extremely rich. He had 300 donkeys, mules, just carrying his keys to his treasures. It wasn't good enough for him, so he instigated a rebellion against Moses, against Aaron, against God, with 250 supporters, because what he had just didn't suffice. What was the punishment? It was an earth-shattering result, an unprecedented punishment. The earth opened its mouth just as Korah opened his mouth against Moses and swallowed up Korah and all his followers. So what's the remedy for the evil eye? One, don't be a green-eyed monster. Have faith that you have what you need, that God knows what he's doing. No person in this world has one hair more or less than they're destined to have. Two, don't be jealous and don't covet because if you really knew the whole story of your neighbor's life, you might not envy him, you might pity him. They might walk around with fancy jewels and nice clothing and go home and cry themselves to sleep every night. Number three, try being happy for people when things go well for them. Instead of being like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they begrudged each other the very air that they breathed. So be magnanimous. The Sodomites were consumed by burning envy and they were destroyed by sulfuric fire. You wouldn't pick up a knife to kill somebody. So why do you let your eyes kill them instead? Next, be like a fish. In the Talmud, it says that fish are resistant to the evil eye because they're underwater and what's hidden is impervious to ill wishes. What's hidden has a chance to be blessed like a seed that grows in the earth. The philosophy of if you got it, flaunt it, doesn't add up to too much in the end. And finally, the best way to ward off the evil eye is to keep the Torah and its commandments because each mitzvah we do creates a protective angel. So just put your ear to your own life, hear your own calling, and keep in mind that on Judgment Day we won't be asked why weren't we as good as others, but rather we'll be asked, why aren't you as good as you could be? If you spend your time becoming the best version of you, you won't have time to be jealous. Shabbat Shalom.